what to do when that passion comes to us now. Lord, forgive yeah. us. You forgive about all the aches and pains. Amen. Lord, you forget about all that goes on in the world around us at this point. Lord, you to get that out of your mind. And I want us to get into the spiritual realm of God at this point. I want us to get our minds set on what the Spirit says, says the Lord. Amen. I want us to get our mind on God this morning. I want us to do that. This morning I want you to forget about all the things that, that might come into your life this week. What happened last week, I want you to forget about it. Yes, Lord. And I want you to get your mind on God this morning. Because I'm going to tell you what I was teaching this morning in Sunday school. It's what we need to do to get in touch with God. Amen. Now, if I'm going to go just a little further this morning. I'm going to read some scripture. I'm going to be going into the, to the book of Revelation. In the 22nd chapter of the book of Revelation. I'm going to be reading there this morning. So, to understand what I'm going to be reading to you this morning. You're not going to have to get out of the natural. Amen. Okay? We're going to have to get out of the natural and get into the spiritual this morning. All right? And in order to do that, we have to talk to God this morning. We have to say, God, I want you to open my understanding to what it is that I'm fixing to hear. I want you to open my understanding to what it is that I'm going to be looking forward to. And it's going to come through the spiritual realm, not through the natural realm. That it's going to happen. And I want you to think about it this morning as we begin to read and stay with me this morning. And I believe if you'll stay with me this morning and get your mind on the spiritual thought, on the spiritual realm this morning, you know what? I believe you'll leave this building this morning with an outlook on life that is going to be different than you've ever seen before in your entire life. It says in the 22nd chapter of the book of Revelation, it says, and he showed me a pure river of water, of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and out of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manners of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month, and her leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. Hallelujah. Think about this this morning. Now you can't grasp this in your mind unless you get into the spiritual realm, okay? The natural is not going to have no part of it. Whenever you leave here, whatever it is, whatever you, do, you think you're going to take with you, forget about it. You're not going to be taking it with you. It's going to be left right here. And we're going to move out of the natural into the spiritual realm of God. And there was to be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servant shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Now listen. Now the first thing we think about whenever that we think about his, his, his we say, and his name shall be in their foreheads. The first thing we think of now, we got to get out of the spirit, out of the natural, and get into the spiritual. In the natural, the first thing we think about of the forehead is what we can reach and touch. Okay? Now I want you to do this right now. I want you to take your hand, reach up to that forehead. Okay? What did you feel? Your forehead. That was the natural. That's the natural that that you got. You hey, you felt, you felt what you felt. Now see, to get into the spiritual realm of God, whenever it speaks of it, uh, and, and it says this, and they shall see his face, and that and his name shall be in their forehead. Now we've got to get out of the forehead of the natural into the forehead of the spiritual, okay? Now this morning, what is the forehead of the spiritual? I'm going to tell you what it is. What is it that controls your soul, your spirit, and everything about you is your mind, your mind in your forehead, in the spiritual realm, and he wanted to say and they shall see his face and they shall see his face 
In other words, whenever we get to heaven, there's one thing, I don't know about everybody else, but when I get to heaven, there's one the first thing I want to see. And the first thing I want to be involved with is seeing the man named Jesus Christ. I want to know what he looks like. And you know, today, whenever I, I begin to think in my mind, what does this man look like? Is he, was he a bearded man? You know, a lot of people, I believe, was in, was in my mind that was, uh, was what I can understand. I believe that my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was probably a bearded, a bearded man. And whenever we look at the pictures on the wall and we look at, at everybody that, that, that says the things about Christ, the first thing that hits our mind is that he was a bearded, a, bearded, a bearded man. I believe, I believe, whenever I stand before him, I will see a man with a beard. That's my belief, okay? That's my belief. That's what I'm going to see. What I'm going to see when I get to heaven is going to be in the spiritual realm of God. What I'm going to see when I get to heaven is going to be in the spiritual realm of God. In my forehead, in my mind, in the spiritual realm, I'm going to see Jesus. What did he say? And we shall see him as he is. Amen. Hallelujah. Think about it just for a moment. And we shall see him as he is. Paul said, I don't know what I'm going to be like. I don't know that, but I do know this. I'm going to be like him. Amen. You know, whenever we think about, about, uh, about whenever it is that the, we speak of what Paul said, he said, I don't know what I'm going to be like, but I do know this. I'm going to be like him. Did he say, I'm going to look like him? Nope. He didn't do it. No. He didn't say I'm going to look like him. He said I'm going to be like him. In other words, I'm going to have his personality. Amen. I'm going to I'm going to have his personality. What did God say? God said, I am love. Amen. God is love. When we get to heaven, you know what? You know, I'm going to read some more in that. And there shall be no more night there. And, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign with him forever and ever. Now, we're not going to understand this. We're not going to understand what I'm talking about unless we get into the spiritual realm of what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about this morning in Sunday school, we've got to get into the spiritual realm of God and understand, to be able to understand that when we leave here, we're not going to take nothing that would bind us that would be anything to us here that would be a curse to us when we get to heaven. We're not going to have that when we get there. Hallelujah. Blessed are they that do his commandments, and they that they may have right to the tree of life, and to enter into the gate of the city. Now, we think about the gates of the city. Now, these things are going to appear to us. You know, Jesus, Jesus, I've heard so many people talk, I've heard so many people talk about, about the bride of Christ. That the bride of Christ is the church. How many people believe that the bride of Christ is the church? It's not what the Bible says. The Bible does not say that the bride of Christ is the church. Nope. I'll give you what the Bible says about it. Go back into the 21st chapter of the book of Revelation. And there came in me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come get it. I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. Come on, let's get into the spiritual realm this morning. Let's don't get into the natural. Let's get out of the let's get out of the natural and get into the spiritual realm of God. That's how we're going to understand what it is that God is telling us. Now I'm going to give you the bride. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you the bride. And he carried me away. In the spirit. Did you hear what I said? Get out of the natural. Get into the spiritual realm of God this morning. 
so that we can understand what it is that God is trying to tell his people. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me a great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. There's your bride. There's your bride. Hallelujah. He said, I go away to prepare a place for you. And if I go away to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. He sets up the bride. Hallelujah. You know, the bride is already, already adorned. The bride is already adorned for the wedding. Hallelujah. Whenever Jesus faith and he calls us home. He calls his children home to be with him. What is his bride? What is his bride? What is the most important thing that was in God's mind whenever he, whenever it was in Jesus' mind when he left here? He said, I go away to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. And he said, if I go and prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. There's going to be a marriage supper. There's going to be a, a, a bride and the groom is coming together. Hallelujah. The bride is, is prepared. Hallelujah. The bride is prepared. I want some more scripture. I want some time for you today. He says, And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his face and his name shall be in their forehead. And there shall be no more night there, and they and they be no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord Jesus, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And the spirit and the bride, they come. Going down, down into the 16th chapter, 16th verse of the, of the 22nd chapter. It says, and the spirit and the bride, they come. What is the spirit? The spirit, God, himself, and the bride. What is Jesus that prepared that holy city, Jerusalem? The bride. And let him that heareth they come, and let him that is thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Let him take of the water of life freely. How many people know what the water of life is? Hallelujah. You can go back to the Revelation and it tells you, it teaches so plain what the water of life is. My goodness. It tells us that we shall see his salvation. What is his salvation? My goodness. Then we go back to the land. Then we go back to the land. Who is the land? Somebody tell me who the land is this morning. The holy land. Jesus this man, Christ. Jesus. The one that died that you may have the hope of eternal life. Amen. What is the hope of eternal life? I just read it to you this morning. What God has went away to prepare for His people, for them that love Him. How much do you love Him this morning? As I was talking this morning, how many times do you talk to Him through the day? I know you tell Him you love Him. How many times do you show Him that you love Him through the day? How many times do you testify and be a good ambassador for, for Him that you tell somebody else about the man named Jesus Christ? Do you do it very often? How many times do we fall short of that? What's wrong with the church today? I'm going to tell you what's wrong with the church today. We don't understand our calling. We don't understand what it is that we are and what it is that we're supposed to be doing. We're ambassadors for Christ. We're supposed to be representing Him. <clears throat> How many times through the week have you represented How many times during the week have you picked up the phone? 
and call a brother or a sister. And begin to tell them how good God is. Representing him. How many times have you done that this way? How many times have you just talked to somebody and said, you know what, today I'm going to tell you something good. I'm going to tell you about this man named Jesus Christ. I feel the presence of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whenever this man, he said, I go away to prepare a place for you. And he said he was coming back again. Mm-hmm. You know, the Lord, the, 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 the 400 that stood on the hillside when Jesus descended up into heaven. You read it, you know what I'm talking about. And the Bible says, I'm paraphrasing now, said there were two dressed in white spirit. And they said this, Why stand ye gazing? In other words, why are you gazing at what is happening? I know, I know, I don't know how bad anybody else would feel, but you know what, whenever, if I was sitting in that congregation of 400 people, and I think the man named Jesus Christ began to come off the ground and to begin to send up into heaven, you know what? That would probably blow my mind. I would probably stand there gazing. I would probably be in a, in a world of my own. Seeing this thing happen right before my eyes, I would probably be gazing. I would probably be dumbfounded. And more than likely, that 400 were probably dumbfounded people begin to see something happen before their eyes like they had never seen before in their life. The man named Jesus began to descend from the earth and began to go up. I feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. But those two men in white apparel stood before him and said, Why stand you gazing? Why stand you in wonder? I want to tell you something. This same Jesus, this same Jesus that you speak all the way, is coming in. Yes, yes. And right now, yes, we look at the world today. We look at the world today. You can turn your TV on and you can hear some of the most gruesome stuff you ever heard in your life. Nobody has any love for nobody anymore. Everything is hate. Everything is hate. Everything is brought up in hate. Mm-hmm. Watch that again. This same Jesus that you see go away is coming again. And like now. My goodness. Of all the hate that's in the world, the believers in Jesus Christ have got something to look forward to. These that are believers in Him have got something to look forward to. I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it, Brother Mike. I want to, I want to be in that bunch when he comes back that goes up to be with him. Hallelujah. What have we got to look forward to? <clears throat> and he carried me away in the spirit in the great and high mountain and showed me that great city, that holy Jerusalem, maybe it's got to so I'm going to show you the bride. Here's the bride. Having the glory of God and her life was like the like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and the gates and the and the gates twelve angels. And names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. 
and the old, and on the east three gates, and on the north three gates, and then on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of that city had twelve foundations, and in them the name of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gate thereof and to walk thereof. We know how big it is. We know how big it is. It gives the dimension of how big this place called heaven is. The bride. The holy city, Jerusalem. That's the bride. That whenever Jesus takes possession of that holy city, that we're going to move in with him. I don't know about y'all, that does something to me. Amen. That kind of makes me feel pretty good. Why are we striving? What are we striving for? Have you ever thought about what are we striving for? Whenever you get up on Sunday morning and you go to church, and you go to church, you get your blessing, you begin to worship God. Amen. That's what God expects of us. Amen. That's what God expects of us. And when we come back from Sunday night, we come in with a praise on our heart and a worship on our mind. Amen. We begin to worship God, begin to praise Him. Why are we doing it? If we don't have a spiritual realm of mind in our head within us, we're not going to understand why we're doing it. Yeah. But if we're in the spiritual realm of God, you know what? We're going to know what it is that we're worshiping for. Mm-hmm. We worship God because He's God. Yeah. We praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for what He's done on the tree. For the sacrifice He made that we could have the hope of what? This new city, Jerusalem. The bride and the groom. And we are the sons and daughters of Christ. Amen. Think about it. Is this resting this morning? Is this resting this morning? Why didn't you come to church on Sunday morning? Why didn't you live for God through the week? There's got to be a reason for it. There's got to be a reason why. That you want to live for God through the week? Well, Mike, there's a reason why we want to do it. I tell you the reason. I just gave you the reason for it. Because we know that we have the hope of what? Eternal life. Amen. We have the hope of eternal life. The things that God has made, and we're not going to grasp His hope until we get into the spiritual realm of God that we can understand what the hope is. When we get that, you know what? God is going to reveal this to his people. Now, I hope you got something out of this this morning. I hope you got something that, that will take you just a little further. That will take you just a little further. That you will get in your mind. Listen, this whole body is going to decay. It's going away. I don't know how it's going to happen. I just know it's going to happen. You may go by the way of, by the, way of the grave. And you may be here when Jesus puts the cloud to go. But all this is going to happen in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Christ is going to take his bride. Amen. And we're going to go to be with him. Hallelujah. You, a man of a new heaven and a new earth. The Bible says this old heaven, the old earth is going to pass away. It's going to melt with firm heat. It's going to be gone. You know, that's hard for us this morning to grasp that in our mind. As big as this world is. Have you ever thought about it? As big as this world is, it's fixing to dissolve. The Bible teaches us it's fixing to dissolve. It's fixing to go away. But we're not. Hallelujah. But we're not. No, 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 no. My friend, what he gave you is yours. What he gave you is yours. He and you're going to have you to get yours. And you're going to live with it from now on. This thing inside of us will never die. This spirit and this soul that is within us is never going to die. But you know what? God made something that just, it just thrilled me from the inside out. A 
I'm going to preach the gospel. Now I'm going to preach the gospel. It's Jesus Christ. Amen. And him crucified. Yes, Lord. Who then? And on the third day, the stone was rolled away. That the stone was rolled away. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name, Lord. By that very means, thank you, Jesus. Gave me the hope of eternal life. Of eternal life. I hope you got something out of it this morning. I hope something is getting hold of you right now. I hope something is grasping inside of you right now.